During this holiday season, give your loved ones a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of their life. Torpedo Pot is the only affordable self-growing flower pot that ensures your future food survival. All you do is add soil, seeds, and seedlings to the flower pot and watch your plants grow. Torpedo Pot can grow nutritious food in such abundance and variety that you can produce more food than your local farm. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Although it is the 21st century and the world develops each day, it is a pity to see signs of colonialism even up to now. This video is about those colonized countries up to this century. It is a common knowledge that Barin Conference, which defend the borders of Tanzania, Nigeria, Sudan, Mozambique, Congo, Ghana, and the Central African Republic and Angora was held in 1884 to 1885. The conference's primary goal was to solve Africa's problems, which ended with the colonization of African countries by Europe. After the meeting, European countries arbitrarily divided Africa amongst themselves and began to rule their new colonies. Africa was a source of slavery for them. Even after colonization, they became interested in it both as a source of raw material and as a market. They seized the resources, labor, and market of their region they exploited and at the same time put pressure on the social, cultural, and religious values of the people under their colonies. There are two African countries that were never colonized, that is to say, Liberia and Ethiopia. Yes, these two were never colonized. But we live in 2021. This colonialism still is going on in some African countries. Let's take a look at a few examples. Today, only Ethiopia has an official language among African countries. The official languages of other colonies are English, French, and Portuguese. In consequence, colonialism is a severe obstacle for these countries to even speak their languages. It is even common that even amongst us, if an African cannot speak a proper English, French, or Portuguese, you'll find a fellow African making fun of him or her. Let's consider another example. Today, Somalia, one of African countries colonized by France, is divided amongst Britain, France, and Italy. Although Europe has assured that it will resolve the conflict, the conflict between Anglophone and Francophone forces in Cameroon is ongoing. Let's take a look at Nigeria, where the French still controls uranium mines. Zimbabwe, where the British continues to mine diamonds and a large part of the economy in Angora and Mozambique are under the control of the Portuguese companies. All that is part of colonialism, but now in a new way. Investment in Burkina Faso must first be approved by the French government. The government of Burkina Faso has no right to interfere. France continues to impose taxes on, the 20, on 21 African countries today. It is estimated that France earns 100 billion US dollars a year from these taxes. 52% of Nigeria's oil revenues go to the British budget. The banking sector entirely lies with Britain. Obviously, colonialism has been rooted and keeps growing in Africa rather than ending. Indeed, there is no more slavery, but there are Africans who work for days to fill the pockets of countries like Britain and France. With some exemptions, African countries are among the poorest in the world today. There are many matters of concern still unanswered. Could Africa's economic development be different with colonialism? 
Would those countries be wealthier today if there was no colonialism? Some debates have been held on these matters for years, but no satisfactory results have been gained. Recently, however, historians have revealed an exciting factor that while studying the archives, there has been an increase in wages in British colonies. Furthermore, the well-being of the people in Ghana has increased, but is all this proof that colonialism does not hinder the development of countries? Let's analyze this question a bit. Admittedly, Africa has benefited from the development of layers and application of technology during period, but how right is it to be steamed from colonialism? If we look at the increase of welfare and the average standard of living, it does not mean that all have benefited from it. After the conquest of South Africa and colonial conditions, there may be an inevitable increase in income in the formal sector. But since a large part of the population is, is withdrawn from the large industry, these statistics cannot be basics for improving living standards. If African countries were not colonies of European countries, the situation would certainly not be different than today. Maybe they would not be as developed as European countries today, but would not be as weak, starving and low income as they are today. They would be able to build their education, have their languages and religions, at least its natural resources which could help them improve their economies would not be exploited by other countries. Indeed, the continent has critical geography leading to challenges in the development of agriculture, but it is possible to strike a balance by being rich in natural resources. It is undeniable that if the revenues that fill the European budgets were included in African country budgets, Africa would not be as it is today. In summary, I shall say that it is challenging to gather the available evidence to claim that African countries have developed more due to the colonization by Europeans. On the contrary, if we examine thoroughly, we will see that colonial conditions have always been the biggest obstacle to the development of African countries. My name is Osi the Bonchild. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll be seeing you in the next video. But most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe to Africa Diaspora News channel and also my channel Osi the Bonchild. Bye bye. I love you all. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon.